Welcome back. In today's video, I want to share with you my three-year experience using Retin-A tretinoin, which of course we know is the gold standard in anti-aging. I'm going to show you some before and after pictures, as well as share some tips and tricks on how I personally got started using Retin-A and how I continue to use it. Before I share my experience with tretinoin with you, and by the way, Retin-A is just a brand name. The ingredient is tretinoin. So before I share my experience with you and show you some before and after pictures, let's briefly go over why tretinoin is the gold standard in anti-aging. I actually made a video last year on retinoids, retinoic acid in particular. If you have not seen that, I will link it down below. But when we talk about retinoids, retinoids is an umbrella term for vitamin A's. So a retinol, a retinaldehyde, and retinoic acid, which is tretinoin, are all retinoids. And countless studies have been done on retinoids, retinoic acid in particular, all of them showing that retinoids not only help increase collagen and elastin production, and thereby help increase epidermal thickness, retinoids have also been shown to be helpful in the prevention and treatment of certain skin cancers. So retinoids, in particular retinoic acid, have not just proven themselves to be a powerful anti-aging ingredient, again, helping with collagen and elastin production, helping to increase epidermal thickness and decrease fine lines and wrinkles. But more importantly, they have also been shown to be very helpful in the prevention and treatment of certain skin cancers. And retinoic acid's ability to help treat certain skin cancers is really what wowed me in the first place. When I started using tretinoin three years ago, I had a ton of actinic keratosis, especially on my forehead and my temples. Actinic keratosis are rough scaly spots, which are usually a result of accumulated sun damage. I used to be a sun worshipper. So back then I would go to the dermatologist and he would freeze off some spots and they would just return somewhere else. So eventually my dermatologist prescribed a chemotherapy cream, which I did not use. Instead, I started using tretinoin. And within three months of using tretinoin, all my actinic keratosis disappeared and it has not returned. So that right there really wowed me but since I have seen other incredible results. Now, before I share my before and after pictures, I have to give you a little disclaimer. First of all, it is impossible for me to say that all the changes I'm seeing in the after pictures are solely from using tretinoin. If you have been here for a little while, you know I like to try different things. Everything I try, I document on this channel. So everything I'm going to list right now is documented in videos. I will link them all down below. Starting with the most frequent thing I tried, and that was I had my very first Sculptra session. Sculptra is a biostimulator. It is poly-L lactic acid, which gets injected under the skin and it helps with collagen production. I had the Sculptra injected right here in my lower cheeks. And honestly, I can't say I'm seeing great results yet. It is an accumulative treatment. So you need about three or four treatments. And I actually have my second treatment tomorrow. But so far, I can't say I'm seeing great results. But since I had the Sculptra treatment right here, when looking at the after pictures, I will mostly focus on my under eye area. Then about three months ago, I did my last radio frequency microneedling. I had four sessions with about six weeks in between. Now, I can't say I'm seeing great results with the radio frequency microneedling. It's tough to say, but under the videos I shared with you, several of you actually asked, why did my provider not go closer under my eyes? And she actually didn't, I don't know why. But since she didn't go that closely under my eyes, I do feel it's fair, again, to look mostly at the changes in my under eye area. Then three years ago, I had my first fractional laser. I had two treatments with about eight weeks in between. 
Now you're supposed to do three or four in a row, but after my second treatment, the pandemic hit. So I waited about a year and then had a third treatment about a year and a half ago. I have to say with the fractional laser, I did see a difference in my skin. However, I also had the fractional laser done on my neck. I also had the radio frequency microneedling done on my neck. And my neck is my <laughs> trouble child. I did not see much change in my neck. However, my neck is the only place I cannot use Retin-A. So since the fractional laser, as well as the radio frequency microneedling, didn't do that much on my neck, but my neck is the one area I can't use Retin-A, again, I do feel it's fair to say that at least a lot of the changes I'm seeing in the after pictures are due to Retin-A. And then lastly, I medical microneedle. And I have medical microneedle for almost 12 years now. Now, medical microneedling has made a huge difference in my skin, but since it is something I have done for the last 12 years, I don't think the changes I'm seeing in the after pictures from, let's say, three years ago, when I did not use Retin-A, but microneedled, the changes are not just from microneedling. And again, I also microneedle my neck, and my neck is, like I said, my trouble child. So these are the things I have done for the last 12 years, really, because I have medical microneedled for 12 years. And then over the last couple of years, I have also started using a couple of skincare tools, mainly microcurrent and LED. So again, it is impossible for me to say that all the changes I'm seeing in the after pictures are just from using tretinoin because I'm also doing, or I have been doing all these other things. But I definitely think that a lot of the changes are from using tretinoin. And then the other disclaimer I have to give you is when looking at the before and after pictures, please keep in mind, I am not a photographer. I do the best I can to get the angle and the lighting somewhat the same. However, when I took the before pictures, I had no idea I was going to have a YouTube channel and I was going to document my retin -A journey. So keep that in mind. But like I said, I do the best I can. Sometimes people get very upset with me when I share before and after pictures because they tell me I clearly manipulated the light or added a filter or who knows what. I have nothing to sell you. I don't sell Retin-A. I just want to share my experience. But none of the pictures I'm going to show you are filtered, nor photoshopped. And like I said, I do the best I can to get the lighting somewhat the same as well as the angle. But also keep in mind, camera equipment, of course, has changed over the last three to four years. So with all of that said, let's take a look at my before and after pictures. So the before picture was taken about three and a half years ago outside. The after picture I took this morning in front of a window. And you can see I have a couple of blemishes in the after picture. So there is nothing on my skin, nor of course is the picture photoshopped or filtered. Now, first of all, if you look at the before picture, I have a line under my eye, which sort of parallels my nose. That line I used to get from sleeping on my side. Because of my neck, I have taught myself to sleep on my back, so I no longer get that line. But if you do look at my under eyes in the before picture, I am actually amazed how pronounced my lines used to be. Now, of course, I still have some lines under my eyes in the after picture, but I do feel they have greatly reduced. Also, if you look at my upper lip in the before picture, again, I have some quite pronounced lines right there. I still see fine lines in the after picture above my lips, but again, I do feel they have greatly reduced. Then when we look right next to my mouth, my lower cheek area, in the before picture, I have three quite pronounced lines. I still slightly see them in the after picture, but once more, they have greatly reduced. Now, this is the area where I had my first sculpture treatment six weeks ago. But if you look at the after picture, you can see how sunken in my cheek still is. So I do think it's fair to say that the sculpture has not quite <laughs> kicked in yet. And that the differences we are seeing in this area are not because of sculpture. And then overall, I feel that my skin in the after picture just looks healthier. 
Now, of course, again, the lighting is not the same. I realize the before picture is a bit darker, but regardless, I do think we can see that the quality of my skin overall has improved. This before picture was taken at the same time as the previous before picture, so about three and a half years ago, again outside. The after picture I took this morning in my bathroom with pretty harsh lighting. Again, I apologize, the lighting is a little bit different, but I still think we can see the difference. In the before picture, the lines under my eyes are quite pronounced and my crow's feet are kind of edged into my upper cheeks, versus in the after picture, of course, I still see some lines under my eyes, but again, I do feel that they have greatly diminished. And then again, the lower part of my cheek on my left side, right next to my mouth. In the before picture, I can see those three lines versus in the after picture, they are hardly visible. However, you can see that my lower cheeks are more sunken in in the after picture than in the before picture, which is just what happens with age. But because of that, once more, I do think it is fair to say that the improvement of those lines are not because of my recent sculpture treatment. And then in this after picture, which was taken about four years ago, I apologize about the lighting. I know it is really bad, but I actually had a hard time finding a picture in which I smile big without wearing sunglasses because I used to be self-conscious about my crow's feet. The after picture, again, I took this morning in my bathroom. You can see I have some blemishes, so there's nothing on my skin. Now, as you can see, when I smile, even in the after picture, I have a lot of dynamic lines around my eyes and on my cheeks. However, I do feel that in the after picture, those lines are less deep and less long. And then overall, even though again I apologize about the lighting in the before picture, but I think we can still see that overall the quality of my skin has improved and my skin looks healthier. Now, much more important than my skin looking healthier and also all the other changes is that my skin is actually healthier and that all the actinic keratosis has disappeared. So I was actually amazed looking at the before and after pictures and seeing all these differences. But again, I want to stress one more time, I am not saying that all of these changes are solely from using tretinoin. That would be impossible to say. Now, I told you in the beginning, I would give you some tips and tricks on how I got started using Retin-A and how I continue to use it. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Tretinoin definitely has a reputation as being a bit harsh, which is why many people shy away from using it. I was one of those people. I never thought that with my sensitive reactive skin, I could ever use Tretin-A. However, when we moved to Naples, Italy, in Naples, tretinoin is available over the counter very inexpensively. So I bought myself a tube, but I started very, very slowly. So this is what I purchased and still to this day use. This is 0.05% tretinoin and 0.05% is the only strength available in Italy. So this is what I started with and, like I said, what I still use. So how I started was I took a pea-sized amount, so about this much. I rubbed it between my fingers. Some people like to put some dots on their face. I like to rub it between my fingers and then I applied it all over my face. I did so once a week in the evenings. So I only applied it once a week for one month. After that one month, I had zero irritation, so I went to twice a week for one month, then three times a week for one month, making sure I have some space in between. So when I applied it twice a week, I would do something like Monday, Thursday, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and so on. So it took me seven months to be able to use tretinoin every single night, but I'm really glad I went so slowly because I had zero irritation. The only place I cannot use my tretinoin, as I mentioned earlier, is on my neck. Now I started on my neck just as slowly as my face, but when I got to using it about three times a week, my neck got very irritated, itchy and red, and I just had to stop using it. 
So to this day, I still don't apply Retin-A on my neck, but I apply it on my chest and my face. Now for me personally, I like to have my Retin-A be one of the first things I apply to my skin. So if you have seen my skincare routine, my evening skincare routine, you know that I apply my Neogenesis Recovery, which is a stem cell serum. It is very thin and watery. I apply that first, but as I said, it is so thin and watery, I do not feel it hinders the absorption of my Retin-A or Tretinoin. Then I apply that. Usually I will let that sit for a little while. So usually I will watch a TV show or something with my husband. Then when I come back, I will do the rest of my skincare. So that works for me. However, if you have sensitive skin, it can help to apply a moisturizer first. So sort of buffering the tretinoin. Applying a moisturizer, then applying the Retin-A or tretinoin. And you can even apply another moisturizer on top. So you're sort of sandwiching it. Also, of course, if you live somewhere outside of Italy, you can also start with 0.02% tretinoin and that might help if you have sensitive skin. You can then work your way up to 0.05 or stay at 0.02. And then also if you have no problems using 0.05, you could move up to 0.1%. Now I have been using 0.05 for three years. And when we left Italy, I bought about 10 of these. So I am good for a while. But once I use up all the tretinoin I have, I might move up in strength and go to 0.1% or I might just stay with this. I have seen great results so far with this, so why fix it if it's not broken? So I hope this was helpful. Also, if you cannot handle tretinoin at all, even when going really slowly, as the studies I've shared with you earlier showed, all retinoids help with collagen and elastin production, help increase epidermal thickness, so it doesn't necessarily have to be tretinoin. You can use retinol or retinaldehyde. Now those are of course milder forms of retinoids and retinol has to go through two conversions in our skin to turn into retinoic acid versus retinaldehyde has to go through one conversion. We don't quite know how much gets converted, but some definitely gets converted as the studies show and retinol and retinaldehyde can also be very beneficial. So it doesn't necessarily have to be tretinoin. For me personally, before I started using tretinoin, I did use a retinol for quite a while and I didn't take before and after pictures. So I can't really say, did I see a huge difference? But it didn't really feel like I was making progress, which is why I wanted to go to tretinoin. So I can hear our neighbors making a whole bunch of ruckus. The apartment next to us is getting remodeled. I'm sorry about the noise, but I hope you were able to hear me okay. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. You know, I always love to hear from you. And if you use tretinoin or a different form of retinoid, please share your experience down below. I would love to hear it. Thank you so, so much for being here. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.